Here we're gonna look at two fairly simple but interesting antiderivatives that require some interesting tricks in order to evaluate. So the first one we're gonna look at looks like this. So we've got the antiderivative or the indefinite integral of cosine to the fourth minus sine to the fourth dx. So if you look at this, you might see that you want to decompose this using some fourth power identity for cosine and sine, but that would actually be a little bit too much work because what we can immediately notice is that cosine to the fourth is the same thing as cosine squared squared, and sine to the fourth is the same thing as sine squared squared. So if we think about this as like being a squared and this is like being b squared, then we have this nice difference of squares factorization as a minus b times a plus b. That's actually gonna help us quite a bit. So let's do that factorization. So that's gonna give us cosine squared x minus sine squared x times cosine squared x plus sine squared x dx. But the whole point for doing that is to use the beautiful Pythagorean identity for the trigonometric functions. And that says that cosine squared plus sine squared equals one. So that means we can replace all of this just with the number one. And thus all we really need to calculate is the antiderivative of cosine squared x minus sine squared x dx. So there's a bunch of ways to calculate this. You could maybe use some sort of double angle formula, but I wanna do it with integration by parts just because I think it's kinda of nice that way. So first off, I'm gonna separate this into two integrals. So I've got the integral of cosine squared x dx minus the integral of sine squared x dx, but I'll go ahead and write that sine squared as sine of x times sine of x dx just to nicely set up my integration by parts. Next, I'll think about this as being u in my integration by parts formula. In other words, sine x. And then sine x dx is dv in my integration by parts formula. So what that tells us is that du equals cosine of x dx because the derivative of sine is cosine. And then v is equal to negative cosine x because that's the antiderivative of sine. Okay, next we can apply the integration by parts formula. So let's maybe recall that up here. So we've got the integral of u dv equals u times v minus the integral of v du like that. Okay, great. So let's see what that gives us. Now we're gonna have the integral of cosine squared x dx minus so let's see, we've got u times v, that's gonna be sine x times negative cosine x. So that's gonna be negative sine x times cosine x. And then minus the integral of v du, so that's gonna cancel with this minus sign, giving us a plus the integral of cosine squared x dx. But now let's see what we can do. We can take this cosine squared x and subtract this cosine squared x, that cancels down to zero. Then next we can take this minus sign and distribute it through to give us a plus sign, and that ends up with sine x times cosine x, and then plus a constant, which you can maybe think of that as coming from the antiderivative of zero, which is attained by this cosine squared minus cosine squared. Okay, let's maybe go ahead and clean up the board and we'll look at another example. Okay. So our next integral is pretty interesting in that it mixes a trigonometric function and a hyperbolic trig function. So we want to look at the antiderivative of cosine of x times the hyperbolic cosine of x. Before we get started, I want to recall really quick that the derivative of the hyperbolic cosine is equal to the hyperbolic sine and the derivative of the hyperbolic sine is equal to the hyperbolic cosine. So that's pretty similar to what's happening with the non-hyperbolic trig functions. You just never pick up a minus sign. We're gonna start our calculation with a trick that's inspired from our last example where we saw that antiderivative of cosine squared cancel. But here we only have one term, so we don't have anything built into it initially that will cancel. 
But if we replace this antiderivative with one half, the sum of it with itself, then maybe something like that would work. So again, I'm gonna replace this with one half, and then the antiderivative of cosine of x times hyperbolic cosine of x dx plus another copy of the same thing. So we've got cosine of x and then hyperbolic cosine of x dx, like that. For our next step, we're going to integrate both of these using integration by parts, but with different choices of u and dv. So in this first integral, we'll take our cosine x term and let that be equal to u, and then we'll take our hyperbolic cosine of x term and let that be dv. So let's see, that tells us that du is equal to minus sine of x dx, because that's the derivative of cosine, and then v will be equal to the hyperbolic sine of x. Okay, good, so that's our setup for this first integral via integration by parts. So now let's see what we can do with this second integral in a pretty similar way. So let's take this hyperbolic cosine of x and let that be u. And then next we'll take our cosine of x with our dx and let that be dv. So what does that tell, tell us? That tells us that du here is equal to the hyperbolic sine of x dx because the derivative of hyperbolic cosine is hyperbolic sine and then v will be equal to positive sine of x because the antiderivative of cosine is sine. Okay, so let's maybe put a box around that and that's what we've got at this point. Now we can apply integration by parts to both of these and see what we get. So we'll have one half, and then we'll have u times v for this first integral. So that'll be cosine times hyperbolic sine, like that, and then minus v du. So let's see, minus the integral, that'll be hyperbolic sine times regular sine. So I'll write this as sine x hyperbolic sine of x dx, but there's a minus sign built into this du, so I'll turn that to a plus. Next, we'll do the same thing over with the second integral. So we'll have u times v. So now we have sine x times hyperbolic cosine of x. So that'll be plus sine x hyperbolic cosine of x minus v du. So let's see, v du will be that guy right there. So that'll be minus sine x hyperbolic sine of x dx in the integral. Okay, good. But notice, doing integration by parts these two ways, we created some integral which looks very similar to our original along with its opposite. So that means we can cancel those and we're left with the solution. So notice we've got cosine of x, hyperbolic sine of x, sine of x, hyperbolic cosine of x. Those are all multiplied by a half. And then maybe we could think about the antiderivative of the zero terms that are left over as having an antiderivative of our constant so we get our plus c. And that's a good place to stop.